this is a talk that I gave uh, several weeks ago in Atlanta um, for a conference called Enterprise Data World. And uh, the organizer had asked me to talk about graph databases and triple stores for an audience where 95% of the audience was kind of not very familiar with the graph databases. So I looked at the people that logged in and about half of them I know for sure know already a lot about this topic, but you still might find some cool arguments that you can use within your own work environment. Um, um, and the organizers gave us this opportunity to have a, a webcast uh, around the same talk that I gave there. Okay, so the talk is about graph databases, triple stores, and how people use them. And I'll talk about one minute about France, then kind of a holistic overview of what a graph database is, and then a typical example. Um, then I'll compare a graph database to a triple store, and then I get into the meat of the presentation, and that's where do people use graph databases and triple stores. I'll give three examples. And then once you've gone through those, we can get back to the question, why do people use graph databases? And then one thing that was uh, fairly important for the people uh, in the enterprise is how do you actually get a graph out of your relational database. So this is roughly the overview of my, uh, my talk. I'll try to keep it within uh, 30 minutes. Okay, so France Inc. company founded in 1984. Um, most of you might know us from France Lisp, uh, but for the last six, seven years been totally focused on semantic technology on our uh, triple store and on our professional services around uh, semantic technology. Uh, we come out of Berkeley, but currently located in, uh, in Oakland. Um, OK, then I was at a conference, and I had to explain what a graph database is. And you can try to do that very complicated, but I'll just uh, I kind of assume that almost everyone in the audience has a computer science background. And, and people know about graph structures. They know about nodes and edges and properties. So I usually give the simple example of uh, politicians and the committees they're on and how you can look at that, those, those people and those committees as a graph. Um, and most of the time I also give a demo around this, but we'll see if we get to this today. Yeah, so graph database. There's a whole bunch of graph database projects out there. I like a graph is one, but uh, most of the audience will know about the other ones too. Um, and then the first thing is, so how does a graph database actually differ from a relational database? So a picture that I've been using for a long time now is where I explain that if you want to store in a relational database information about people, and you want to uh, represent that a person uh, has been to multiple schools, might have had multiple spouses in their life, multiple professions, and multiple places where you lived, then before you know it, you need about eight tables to represent that. Yeah. Now, the same information in a graph database, so this is for the same person 2 you saw in the last picture, but person 1, 2, and you see how you can represent the same exact information uh, directly as nodes and links and properties. Yeah. Fairly obvious to most people when they see it this way. By the way, on the left-hand side, you see the name of the predicates. And I'll get into this use interface a little bit later in this talk. So how is a graph database different from um, a relational database? And here's my, my four ways to express that. In the first place, there's no schema. In a, a graph database, you can say whatever you want to say. Um, obviously, if you like a little bit of order in your life, you might want to use an ontology to be more systematic about it. Uh, one too many relationships are directly encoded, so you don't need any link tables, which in many cases make lives easier. Um, then in graph databases and triple stores, usually you don't have any indexing choices. Everything gets indexed for you anyway. Again, this makes life easier. Um, and a lot of queries will work fast straight out of the box. And then finally, a graph database is a very low-level representation. You can express any other type of database uh, in a graph database, whether it's uh, an Hadoop or Big Data database, or whether it's a triple store, or whether it's uh, a relational database, it can all be uh, modeled as nodes and links. Yeah, and so what we see that we take, we do a lot with rows and columns from relational databases. We do a lot of transformations from XML into um, graphs. Obviously, we deal with RDF and AL, 
And finally, half of our work consists of working with text, where we take entities out of text, and then we turn those entities into triples and store them in the graph database. Yeah, so a very short difference between the two. And so now, how is a triple store different from a graph database? Well, I'd like to explain that by saying, in a graph database, you have something that is mostly very local to the application or the database that you have. You have nodes and links, but they only mean something within the context of that graph. Um, triple stores and RDF is different because uh, you express the graph as triples with a subject, predicate, object, and optionally a fourth element, and where each element is a persistent URI. Yeah, you see one triple here, Jans talks at Atlanta. Each of them is a persistent URI, and you could have uh, somewhere on the web, more information about each of these three URIs. Yeah? And this is it's extremely powerful because what it allows you to do is to very easily link um, data sets together just by virtue of having uh, persistent URIs. And the whole web of data or the linked open data cloud is based on this principle. And the other thing that triple stores add to graph databases is that there's a whole um, body of standards around it, uh, all done by W3C. And we've got RDFS, who puts uh, an object layer on top of the triples. We have all that adds uh, a, a logic. We have a, a query language called Sparkle. And then another difference between a triple store and a graph database is that uh, most graph databases uh, live in memory. Yeah, as soon as you get out of memory, then performance bang drops down. Triple stores are a little bit more hybrid. There's much more time spent on the query optimizers so that you get roughly the same performance from a relational database for certain type of aggregate queries. Yeah, so this is how a triple store differs from a graph database. And then um, what I've learned by now is that instead of talking about triples and talking about graph databases, it's so much more illuminating to talk about examples and to give a demo. So this is a demo that some of the people in the audience have seen already, but I'd like to do it anyway. Um, so here's a demo that is based on the linked open data cloud. I'm kind of assuming that everyone in the, in the audience is, is familiar with um, this new movement where people put databases on the web and publish them as triples. And this is the picture of how in 2007 we already had several databases out there expressed as triples. So for example, the DBpedia as the, uh, the RDF version of the Wikipedia, GeoNames, a database for 7 million places on Earth with latitude longitudes. Everything is linked together. So a, a city like uh, Oakland will have, in DBpedia, will have one triple saying, Oakland has GeoNames ID, and then you get a number, and then GeoNames will describe all the geospatial char characteristics of Oakland. Um, so this was 2007, then this is 2010, and it's gotten even bigger now in 2012. Um, there's billions and billions of triples from the area of uh, in, in pharmaceutical, in the life sciences, a lot of in the area of publications. This is all multimedia data. Uh, this is government data. This whole thing is probably around 40, 50 billion triples right now. And the demo that I usually give is about five databases that I download um, from the linked open data cloud, five life science databases. One is a, a database with 4,000 diseases. One of, is a database with the, the medicine that you buy in the pharmacy. There's about 100,000 clinical trials, um, 1,800 FDA-approved drugs in, the da in a database called DrugBank, and then the database of side effects. And you all can download them freely from the web, um, import them in any, any of your graph databases or triple stores, and um, let me show you how we work with that. So let me see. So here is um, the GUI for our triple store. Uh, it's called Graph. Um, freely downloadable. Let me take this away. Um, usually I'm in an audience and I ask people, give me your favorite drug, but given that you're all muted, let me come up with a drug. Yes, so let's say um, I do something like, so all the triples that, so basically what happened is that I, 
I can create a new triple store. Yeah, and then I create a new triple store, and then I can load triples, and I could say load n triples, and I can load them from the web. I can type in a URI, and then triples will be downloaded straight into this tool. But I already have done that for you. And everything is then pretext indexed. So let me, looks like something like um, cancer and ibuprofen. Yeah. And I can look at clinical tri some clinical trials. And so here you see three of the trials that discuss both ibuprofen and cancer. I can double click one and now I see the table view of my triples. So you see that this particular clinical trial number 3205, for example, have, uh, discusses one disease, which is breast cancer, discusses a whole bunch of drugs, and then a whole bunch of side effects. So this is one triple, 3205, discusses the drug, say, codeine. I can click on codeine. And now I'm in the, now I jumped from the clinical trial database into the drug database, and here we see the chemical formula, the LUPAC name, we can see the mechanism of action, the pharmacology, etc. We can look at other clinical trials that then discuss codeine, and we can go on and on and on. Uh, but let me get back to the graph screen, and let me take a few steps back to get to this point. So another way to explore a graph database of triple store is to look at some of the predicates that you want to explore on screen. So what you see here is all the outgoing and incoming um, predicates for everything that was on the screen so far, but we just choose a few of them. Just the, the diseases, drugs, side effects, and targets. And I could click a letter here, and I can choose a few things I want to discuss. And I see that all the clinical trials are already connected to some extent, um, and then I could click on another one, and I could go on and on and on and get more and more information on the screen. I can right click on something, and I can say as a subject, say the official title, yeah, so I can explore the graph uh, uh, officially. Um, I also can ask for the connection between elements, so let me go back. Yeah, so here I was, and I can say, give me all the links between this trial and this trial through the four uh, predicates that I chose earlier. Yeah, and so I can look at this. Um, then I can take any other drug or any other phenomenon, so let's take, say, uh, a a drug like MDMA, which is another name for uh, ecstasy, yeah? And I can take something like this and, well, first of all, I could look at the triples. So there's some drugs discussed, some side effects, some diseases where people use this. And I can say, so how does this trial relate to a trial about ibuprofen and cancer? And I let the system think, and I find 41, 7,000 or 41,000 paths between it. So I can look then on the screen to find some shortest path. And it could be cocaine, methamphetamine, diabetes, etc. And so basically what I did now is I let the database find links between two completely different types of clinical trials through a set of predicates that I find important at some point in time. Yeah. So this is the, um, the graph view, then the semantic web graph data will have has a special query language called Sparkle. Again, most people are not deeply familiar with that already. Yeah, here we see a trial where we no, here we see a query, a Sparkle query, where we try to find every drug and side effect trial and title where there's a drug with the brand name Lipitor and a side effect with the name type 2 diabetes. And then give me every trial that does this both this drug and the side effect. And I can do the query, and like in a relational database, I can get my results back. But because this is a graph database, I can also show it the results as a graph. Yeah, and so here we see the graph representation of the results of this particular query. And then one thing you can do is you can also look for similarity between objects. So I can, for example, say, um, 
given this particular clinical trial, find all the other clinical trials that have roughly the same diseases, side effects, drugs, and targets. Yeah, so this is kind of a cluster analysis, and I can do the query. I get some results, so I find that trial 730028 has 11 things in common with trial 130091. I can look at the graph, and then I can say, so how are they actually related? And I can just take any two of them, but yeah. And so I can keep going. Uh, now, writing these queries by hand is kind of hard. So um, we also give you a completely visual way to do this. So say I want to find clinical trials that talk about morphine or um, and, and a, a gene called cytochrome C3. Then I could do it this way. I can say, well, let's try to find morphine. Let's get a clinical trial. And the database, of course, already knows all the predicates that, li that link to the object morphine. So it will give me all the predicates in the system that point to it. So I say, well, I want to look at a drug. And then I can look at, say, a target or gene. And I can say, give me all the links that point to this, to this target. And I can choose to create a Sparkle or Prolog query. Um, but I want the distinct results, how many results I want, but I can do the query. And here we see the query that was created, and here you see the results of the query. So let's look at a few of them. And here you see the result of this query that I just did that I built officially on the screen. Um, but it's kind of interesting to see what people don't realize, but in the graph database, a typical graph database, you said you get to see the name of the objects here. Um, but for us, please look at the bottom of the screen, you see the full resource. Um, so what we try to do when we just play stuff on the screen is to make it as user-friendly as possible. I can I can hit the key Control F8, and then you see that this is actually what really happens in the top store. You get all these long URLs, and notice that actually it's not even a name of a drug in this case, but just a number. So what we also do is, instead of showing the URL for this or the number, we look up the label for this particular instance to show it. So we do a lot of things underwater to make it easier for you to see your graph. OK, so this is a quick demo of a graph database. And um, and, and I kind of show how this is a, um, a triple store by actually looking at the actual triples and the actual names of the predicates. But again, this is too painful for human beings. so. We make it very easy for you. All right. Um, any questions so far? OK, then let's continue. Um, so where do people use this stuff? Well, um, what you see is that the uh, intelligence agencies and the, and, the, and the DOD are very interested in this. These are customers from France, but I know that all the other graph databases are also completely engaged in the intelligence community. So there's a there's a big interest in that area. And then the commercial world now also is getting deep into RDF and graph databases. And each well, we've done projects for each of these uh, companies here. A lot of um, top 500 companies. There's there's uh, pharmaceutical industry, there is uh, um, uh, hospitals like Mayo Clinic and MD Anderson, there's media companies like Kodak and Adobe, um, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so all over the place there's a need for graph databases, and I'll, I'll get into the why at the end of this talk. So I'll, I'd like to give three examples of where people use um, uh, a graph database or triple store. The first one that I wanted to show to these people in, in Atlanta, they were enterprise architects, was that you can actually use this in enterprise for business intelligence. So I talked about our customer MDocs that built a telco platform that knows almost everything about every customer in real time, and that has now proved to save about 20% of the total cost of customer care operations. You talk about a new thing that we're building in France is a supply chain management system that once early for disruptions in the supply chain. And we did a project with a partner, uh, Top Quadrant, 
that built a reporting platform for 31 oil companies. Um, and I'm going to say a little bit about each of them. So the first one is um, a system we built with MDOCS, um, where we took information from more than 40 different databases um, and turned that into high-level knowledge about customers. Yeah? So um, normally, I mean, there's an enormous amount of information about a telephone, about a person in a telecom database. Yeah? They know uh, our call data records, they know our downloads, they know whether our device is working, they know where we are at any point in time, they know our bills. But if you call the call center and you've got any problem, then these poor people have to go through an enormous amount of screens just to figure out your, your overview. So what MDOX wanted was to create a system where with one push on the button, you have a total high-level overview of, of customers the way business people like to think about you. And so <clears throat> we have a system where we have about five to 10,000 triples per customer. Yeah, so we know your social connections. And for each social connection, by the way, we know how many, uh, how often you call that particular person. We know that you like science fiction movies and that you're angry, that we better give you a video download for free. We know the margin. We know you, whether you're a good payer and whether it's going up or down. We know whether you, what your mood is and whether it's going up or down. We, kn we can predict whether you uh, will go to another company, uh, another take another subscription, yes or no. We know what kind of plan you have and how that fits together. So there's a... Um, we know where you are on a Tuesday afternoon, so it's 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 a, an amazing overview of of a single person in real time. Um, and again, I usually show this picture where we say so instead of IT facts, we store subjective information, patterns, trends, geospatial things, t temporal facts, probabilities, absence of occurrence, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is the architecture, and in uh, at Semtech, uh, in two weeks, I'll talk extensively about this architecture and how we now apply this architecture to multiple other industries, um, yeah, where we start relational databases, we unify every event into triples into a, uh, an event collector, and then we have a rule-based system where we literally apply hundreds of business rules to create the higher level knowledge that describes the state of every single customer. Um, okay, so this is the MDOCS use case, um, and we've turned it into a product that we call Allegro Set, or Smart or Semantic Entity Tracking, yeah, where we can apply to IT asset management, visitors, visitors into the U.S., ships entering the Bay Area, credit cards, insurance cards, and a unified view on bank customers, and many, many more um, <clears throat> opportunities. Then another system. Um, that we're building internally um, is uh, a tool to help company companies with risk in the supply chain management in the supply chain. Um, so if you build a complicated product, whether it's a car or a computer, then um, you want to make sure that events that happen elsewhere in the world don't affect your supply chain. Nowadays, most companies have... Uh, these, these systems uh, just in time logistics yeah where you try to get your stuff in as, as as late as possible so that you don't have to have all inventory um, but of course that brings a risk yeah so what you know what you want to know is which parts produced by a sub sub vendor will be less available to a flood in China or which of our products will be affected by political unrest in Thailand and what happens a lot by the way I never realized it but that uh, in the supply chain, competitors always also can disrupt your um, production process by, for example, buying up all the chips that you need. Anyway, so there's a lot of things that happen in the supply chain that can affect you. And this is just a, a picture of how this all relates together, but let me just uh, click over this. Okay, so for supply chain management, we needed to get three kind of graphs to come together. The first one is... Um, and graph databases are really good for this, is to take a bill of material, yeah, um, and you put the bill of material into a graph, and, and the reason why graph databases are good for it is because a bill of material is a recursive data structure. It's not just one list, but list, but you have products that contain parts, that contain subparts, that contain subparts, so it can go deep. 
Then for each part, you want to have the first tier vendors that provide you the parts. Um, and OK, so well, I'm, I, I guess that's fairly obvious. Then you want the supply chain for the first tier vendors. Yeah, so you buy, as a producer or manufacturer, you buy from a vendor, but the vendor will buy from sub-vendors, and the sub-vendor will buy from, from, from their vendors, et cetera, et cetera. And by the way, this is a really hard thing to do, because most vendors don't like to talk about where they get their parts from. And in some areas you do know, so when we do this in the military domain, and if you get, say, like a, an, an, an engine for a nuclear engine, then the DOD knows for every part, uh, ultimately, even the mill where the steel came from. But if you talk about like a car, then it's a much more difficult. And then finally, what we needed to do is we, we need to take all the parts and the businesses, and we scrape the web for information about these um, uh, parts and vendors. And then we look at the countries. Well, we look at country information. Uh, we get all that news from the web. We apply entity extractors. Um, and we wrote some of our own rules to find um, natural disasters, political unrest in papers or in, in newspaper articles, and then we can relate that um, to uh, and we can relate it to all the other parts in the other graphs. Yeah, so this, this is a particular little graph that links all the way from a part that goes through a producer that lives in a particular country where there is a flood in Bangkok. Yeah, and so we can write rules. Let's say, well, warn that the vendor will have a problem with the part if there is a danger word in a particular text in a particular country where this country has a place, yeah, where this place has a particular producer that produces a particular part, yeah, and uh, we buy from this particular vendor. Yeah? So this is the kind of rule that we use and that will warn you, hey, wait a second, um, Deep down in our supply chain is someone that might be affected by this, so you better go check to see if your vendor really can deliver. Or maybe you want to buy up everything just before your your competitor buys up a particular part. Yeah. So this is another example. And then finally, uh, we did a project with Top Quadrant, um, a company specialized in professional services and, and, and ontology building. And we worked for... Um, um, a non-profit organization in Norway that combined that combines more than 31 oil companies that all have oil rigs in the in the North Sea, um, and all these platforms have have by law um, need to um, uh, report every day about oil production and things that happen on the oil rigs, and of course each oil company has their own IT company, and so all these things were completely different. And, uh, but we built a reporting platform where we took the XML spreadsheets that would come from a rig or the, X, well, the XML or the Excel or the relational databases. We built mappers to them. We stored that in a relational database. Then we took all of that plus the ontologies. And so now we have a unified view on all, all the information coming from the oil rigs. And then we have a set of templates so we can export it again as XML or Excel or HTML or JSON. And I, I presented this to the people in Atlanta just because, well, this is something that is that is known to um, uh, uh, the, the enterprise people. It, people know it's a problem to integrate data sources. And um, what I try to explain is it's very straightforward to do data integration in uh, using graph databases and triple stores. And I won't go too deep, but this was completely ontology driven all the way from the bottom up. Um, okay, so I described three use cases. So now let's go back to uh, uh, when do you want to use a graph database or triple store? And I've talked about this before. Um, this is actually a trend view about how relational data, it's becoming less sexy to write about relational databases. And NoSQL and graph databases are currently coming up. Yeah. Um, and so life for people in the enterprise is getting really complicated because what do you need to use? Do you need to use um, a relational database for your project? Do you need um, uh, a big data database like Hadoop or Cassandra? Or do you need like a graph database or a triple store? And um, 
actually at Temtech in two weeks, I, I have a, a full presentation just about this topic about, and this is more about the marketing terms, but it's big data, fast data, and complex data. So give a whole talk about it, so I'll just summarize it here. Yeah, if you, um, if you have a regular enterprise application, then you're kind of dumb if you don't use a relational database because 30 years of experience, 30 years of robustness, and why would you even use something else? Yeah. Now, if you have uh, a billion objects, say you have a half a billion or 700 million Facebook pages, yeah, then it's not really going to work to have a relational database. Yeah. Then you need something that is super, super fast to get a single object back, yeah, where that object can be a blob that is basically contains a little tree. It's kind of flexible, but not too flexible tree of objects. Um, and in that case, you want to use something like, well, uh, a big data solution like Hadoop. And then you have applications where you have very, very complex data. And I showed you the graph with pharmaceutical data. But just imagine that you want to represent the human body, yeah, the, the ontology of the human body. You try to stick that into a relational database or Hadoop. I mean, you wouldn't get anywhere. Yeah? Or in the supply chain yeah, and all the risk factors there. I mean, you wouldn't even think about putting that into a relational database or Hadoop. Yeah, then that's where things get so complex that you actually want a graph database at Triple Store. Now, of course, all the vendors claim that they can do everything else there, but that's just um, that's how we are as vendors. Yeah. So again, summarizing, when a graph database at Triple Store, this is the, the kind of slide that I like to show, is when you need ultimate flexibility. Yeah, so if you model knowledge and assets, if you have hundreds of thousands of classes of different features, yeah, or if you add every day new classes, new features, or you have to do a lot of rules or reasoning, well then, uh, you better consider uh, a triple store, a graph database. When you need the ultimate in linkability, yeah, then all the other databases won't help you, and only only the semantic technology will help you. Or when you need pattern recognition and network analysis, then again, um, you might want to consider a graph database. Now, um, and finally, and this is something that, I've, that we've been doing in France for several years now, is when you need to do event processing, like we do with MDocs, yeah, where you need to use spatial, temporal reasoning, and social network analysis, combined with flexible metadata. Um, OK, so yeah, these are my most important reasons why I want to use a graph database. And then just to stress that a little bit more, I show some queries. And because I'm there in a, in a room with enterprise architects, and of course, they all know that SQL and can write complex SQL queries, and they say, so. Say you want to do a query like France sends money to Cray and Cray sends money back to France. Yeah, it could be a case of uh, trying to boost both both each other's revenues. Yeah, you could do a query where you say, well, find every A B C D E where France sends money to A, sends money to B, sends money to C, to Cray and then back, and these are not the same. Yeah, well, I can imagine that most of you can express this as SQL. But if you get to do a query like this, yeah, where you want to look for paths that have indeterminate length, then you get something like find a path one and a path two, where there's a path from France to Cray using sent money that's more than two, and inverse, and the intersection of these paths is empty. Well, you would know how to write this in, in, in SQL, at least maybe uh, a percent of a percent of the SQL people knows how to write something like this. Um, but for us, the graph database is very easy to express. Yeah? So again, it's hard in SQL because, well, it's all self-joins and just try to write it as a SQL query. And why is this hard in the distributed key value store? Well, again, it's very hard to write this, this one expression that I showed you as a MapReduce expression. It's doable, but it's going to be a really huge Java program to get it done. Yeah? And then finally, what I discussed at this meeting in Atlanta was about the, the dealing with events. And um, I tell people about the event ontology that we use, where you have, well, you can express almost everything in the world as events, whether it's a hospital visit or a financial transaction or a call, uh, a telephone call or a, a meeting, et cetera. Yeah, so you have events that, are, that have a type. An event always has a list of actors. Sometimes there's only one, but m mostly it's more. Think events usually happen somewhere, and there's always a start time and an end time for an event. And finally, there's a lot of other metadata about events. Yeah. And what we've done in our graph database is add 
full libraries for social network analysis. Yeah, so how far is one person from another and how strong is relationships? To what group does this person belong? Uh, how important is this person in the group, etc., etc. We do geospatial search. Um, and then finally, we have a lot of um, primitives to help you reason the time. And all of that helps you then finally to do queries that you would never do in a graph database, sorry, in a, in a, in a relational database or in a, in a Hadoop database where you say, well, find all the meetings that happened in November within five miles of Berkeley was attended by the most important person, Jan's friends or friends of friends. Yeah, here's the whole query. But what you see here is you link social network analysis and database lookups and RDF and temporal reasoning and spatial all in one query paradigm. Yeah? Very, very powerful and only doable in, uh, in, in a technology that supports complexity. Um, and then finally, oh, I've, I've gone more over my half hour. How do I get my triples out of my database? Well, again, I'm going to talk about it at Semtech, but actually we work with partners that make it very easy and we're working with both Mule and Talent, where we can do the orchestration, and where we, they can use R2 RML mapping, uh, another thing that we'll talk about at Semtech, or we use other mapping technologies that are friendlier to use and easier to, to, to make. For example, we use a, a tool where you can actually visually look at the, 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 the columns in your comma separate file or relational database, where you ask the system to generate templates, then you get a template of how this example of a column in, in your particular table gets returned into triples, and you can edit every part of this mapping, uh, and ultimately you can send the data straight to Allegro Graph with this mapping tool. Um, and that concluded my talk in Atlanta, and that concludes my talk here, and let's see if we have questions. Okay, if you have any questions, there's a question box. Yeah, so one question is where can I get the linked data you demoed? Um, send me an email and I'll send you back a link. We have an FTP site and uh, and that link is on our FTP site. It's called, yeah. Uh, can you iterate reiterate the difference between a graph database and a triple store. Is a graph a graph database also? Um, yes. So I would say every graph, every triple store is a graph database yeah, because the whole semantic web is based on the graph. But not every graph database is a triple store because most graph databases have a lot of trouble dealing with all the strings that are used in the semantic web plus they don't have all the, the things to deal with ontologies and with reasoning. But I guess there's a deeper thing behind that, and that is um, what people mostly talk about when, of what they think when they ask this question is, uh, okay, but graph databases are created to be extremely fast with graph algorithms. Yeah. And triple stores are more, well, more, more traditional Sparkle queries, but not so much. Well, um, we at France have created, and we already have this for nearly four years now, a whole graph database library in our triple store to do with all the social network analysis, but also the classical graph algorithms. Um, and we created actually um, several techniques to make it very easy and straightforward to take complex relationship and turn it into temporary um, adjacency lists yeah, the, the, the heart of all graph database uh, algorithms. Yeah, very flexible. And when we do that, then we suddenly are an extremely fast graph database. Yeah. And what I'm going to talk about at Semtech is about uh, our new Allegro Graph vertical, um, where we have a very compressed graph database uh, with very fast access times, and where we can apply parallel prolog to use all the processes in our system. Um, I actually will be there at the at the conference with a laptop uh, with a billion triples that fit actually in memory. But anyway, let's come to Semtech and I'll talk to you about it. Another question, is Graph extensible? Uh, could I OEM it inside of another project? Um, <clears throat> well, 
um, we actually, for people that are interested, will make the code available. Um, we, we haven't open sourced it, but on the other hand, we, if you want to use it in another project, we'll make it easy for you to do that. How much of the work in the MDOS case involved writing ontologies? <coughs> um, well, a lot. Uh, because when you do a project like that, you actually start with, uh, okay, what are all, all the things that we ultimately want to know about a customer? And so, now actually you begin with what are all the the questions we want to answer in a system like that. So you come up with a large set of things that you want to be able to know and answer about a customer. And then you say, okay, so what is the supporting ontologies? So there was a huge effort to use, actually in this case, Top Rate Composer to create uh, the ontologies that represent the uh, knowledge about a customer. And then, of course, once you, once you have that knowledge about a the customer, then you have to reason back, okay, so how is the data in my database is going to support it? So um, we also wrote ontologies that described the data in original source databases and ontologies for how you want to represent events happening in your source databases as triples in your event queue. So lots and lots of ontologies all around. Okay, the last question. Uh, do you provide consulting around supply? Yes, absolutely. We provide consulting around supply chain uh, projects. We help you with the, the scraping for products. We help you with the ontologies, etc., etc. So we uh, just send us an email and we'll, uh, we'll help you out.